Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Merry Christmas, America. We're glad you're with us. Christina Ellis, number one best-selling author, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and about your money. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Starting off this hour is going to be Elena in Austin, Texas. Hi, Elena. How are you? Hello. Hi. Merry Christmas. Hi, this is Gloria. Say again. Gloria. My name is Gloria. Oh, hi, Gloria. I guess I yes. pushed the wrong button. Let's try something else. Let me try here. For Elena. Is that Elena? Hi, Elena. Yes. Oh, Hello. I screwed up. I, I hit the wrong button. Okay, what's up? <laughs> uh, I'm doing good. How about yourself? Better now. How can I help? Uh, yes, yeah, so I have a quick question. Um, I currently have about $60,000 in my savings account, and I'm not too sure what to do next. I definitely want to make my money grow so no there's like a slow process where you could do like a um saving certificate but i want to see if there's any other options that will definitely help me get um you know um i get more money built up uh or such well done where'd you get the sixty thousand? so i've been saving since um uh, before college um and but it has increasingly went up um with my full-time job that I recently got um, and other side hustles that I've been doing that just has helped me uh, accumulate that amount. Elena, that's amazing. Way to go. Do you have any debt? No, not at the moment. I'm curious, how did you pay for college? Uh, With college, I had um, a ton of scholarly scholarships. Um, I also had uh, private scholarships um, and then... Uh, I would pay school. If I had any money that I had to owe from the school, I did have um, a part-time job at the time where I would just use the money to pay it off while also saving. You're amazing. Way to go. That's just incredible. I love that. Just out of curiosity for myself, where did you get that mindset? How did you learn so early on that you wanted to save aggressively, that you wanted your savings account to look like that? Well, it all started when I first got my job. Um, having I was paid cash. So having that money in my hands um, and being able to, like, see how much it goes down with buying a, a, something from the store just taught me that I, I wanted to have my hands full with money, not empty by just purchasing random stuff. And so the first thing that I saved up for that was pretty big was a car. And I, I was able to learn that you can get most of what, whatever you want. You just have to look hard enough. That's how I was able to find my first car for three thousand dollars and from there that helped a ton since i didn't have to do monthly payments or anything I just did it very well done. so what do you do for a living so right now i'm a data scientist oh. at a uh biz or a car dealership yeah what do you make about eighty four thousand. good for you okay so here's the thing that we teach the shortest distance between where you are and being wealthy is a series of steps Baby step one is save $1,000. You've Mm -hmm. done that. Two is to be debt-free other than your home. You've done that. Three is to have an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. So we would earmark some of your $60,000 for your emergency fund. Uh, We could call that $15,000 pretty comfortably as an example, okay, which would still leave you $65,000. What are we going to do with that? We're going to move on to baby step four and or start you, you earmark this for saving towards a home, either one. You thinking about buying a home anytime soon? Uh, I wouldn't say a home just yet. Um, I do have a partner and we're thinking of buying a property so that we can um, make, uh, I guess, rent it out with other homes like uh, mobile homes and such. Yeah, I would um, not so do that. Use that as- Mm-hmm. I would not do that. Don't buy real estate with partners. If you want to buy some real okay. estate, you buy the real estate, but you don't need a partner to do that. Um, okay. 
you're going to involve yourself in a, in a mess that you're going to end up untangling later. The only ship that won't sail is a partnership. So uh, I assume that you mean that kind of business partner. Is that what you meant? No, uh, an actual relationship partner. Okay. Are, if, if, well, if you're not married to someone, don't buy a house with them. Okay. That's what I'm saying, because you're setting yourself up again for all kinds of problems uh, if this doesn't go, if this relationship doesn't go forward. So if you're married, there's a, okay. a methodology called divorce that takes the property and splits it up. There's not when mm -hmm. you're not. Mm -hmm. And so don't do that. Now, as far as then, then what we would just move on to is you're just an investor. Okay. You're either going to buy real estate with this other 65,000 and, or you're going to start putting money into your, uh, into your retirement plan, into good growth stock mutual funds. We recommend that you put 15% of your income every year at baby step four into a good growth stock mutual funds into a retirement plan. And that's uh, if you've got a 401k at work, you get the match first. If it's a Roth 401k, you can stay there. Otherwise, after the match, you would need to move on and do Roth IRAs. Uh, and the mutual funds are growth, growth and in income, aggressive growth, and international. You're looking for mutual funds with long track records, 10, 20, 30-year track records. And uh, you need to learn about those as you're putting money into that. Sit down with one of our Smart Vester Pros. Uh, they'll help you do that. The Smart Vester Pros don't work for us, but they're people that uh, teach the same stuff that we teach, and they'll help you with uh, picking out the mutual funds, teach you that they're investment brokers. You can find them at RamseySolutions.com and click on Smart Vester Pro. So, yeah, that's a, uh, uh, you know, the process we would use to, to lead you there. Hang on, we're going to send you a copy of the Total Money Makeover book, which outlines that for you in great detail. So, Christina, the big, the only, the only, she had done so many things right, but she could undo every bit of it with one wrong move, and that's buying a house with someone you're not married to, or buying a investment property with someone you're not married to, uh, and that will get you into a mess. Yeah, we've seen that several times, and and I think that's kind of a dangerous spot whenever you don't have a proven plan. It's easy to start to get to that wealth building spot and see all the TikTok crazes and see all the different, you know quick ways to make money. And it's like, you can get really lost in that. But Elena, you have done such an amazing job thus far. I love that you've been so aggressive with your savings. Follow the plan. It, it's not the most flashy, you know, uh, you know, TikTok crazy plan, but it's proven. It has worked for millions we, of people. I think we ought to put the plan on TikTok. I think <laughs> it'd be good. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> yeah. I told the guys to get get a, get, get us a TikTok account and let's get it on there. I, I'm ready for it. So there you go. This is The Ramsey <laughs> Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com.
Christine Ellis, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Well, here at Ramsey Solutions, we go all out to celebrate Christmas. We love it. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, right? Hey, that's why we're giving you a surprise three-day year-end sale on brand new products in the Ramsey store. That's three days of crazy low prices on our most popular items right now. Financial Peace University gift voucher, $69.99. One of the best prices ever on FPU right there. Dr. John Deloney's best-selling book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, $12.99. Ramsey sweatshirts and hoodies. Hmm. All audiobooks are just $5, and that includes a Total Money Makeover audiobook. You could listen to it as you go over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house. Five bucks. Not bad. Don't forget, 2023 will be here in a minute. And if you want to grow financially, spiritually, relationally, pick up the 2023 Ramsey Gold Planner. Only $35.99, the lowest price it's ever been. Can't believe those aren't sold out. That's weird. Okay. So, so I, hey, this stuff is going like crazy. Questions for human cards. Our three-day sale ends at 11.59 p.m. Central Time Thursday. Don't drag your feet. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash store. Check out the deals. They are there for sure. All right. Gloria is now with us in New York City. Hi, Gloria. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, and thank you. How can we help? Okay, my question is, I have a house, and I recently retired. I'm 61 years old. I went for the Board of Ed for 20, um, 27 years. And I still owe a mortgage on my house because it was only me. Um, it's only me on the deed, and um, the mortgage is one hundred sixty-four thousand still, nine hundred twenty-seven dollars. And um, I have uh, two boys that live with me right now. Um, one was in the military; he came back home, and the other one works for a sanitation here in New York City. But my question is, should I sell my home to my children, or should I put them on the deed so that I can take? the equity out of it because I can't, I have like 400 and, uh, 400 and something thousand dollars in equity, but because of my income, they say that I can't like, I don't know, take out the equity because uh, I don't, I don't earn enough money. And right now I went from $56,000 to $24,000 a year. Well, why did you go from 56 to 24 at 60 years old? Because because I was working, um, and I used to my 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 check used to be fifty six thousand dollars. I'm not a teacher; I'm an assistant teacher. So um, my um, my income from my TRS is uh, the teacher's retirement. It's um, two thousand dollars a month. When did you make fifty six? What were you doing then? When I was working, because I was working when I was working. Um, Why aren't you working? I got I because I, I retired. Okay, but you have no money. You're you're said know, you're sixty years. Was, I, you said you're sixty years old, right. right? I know, but what happened was when I get when I I was working in the school, and then when I got um I got COVID last year in August, and then when I came back um to work, I guess I was still feeling the effects of the COVID. I don't know, but um I just went in for my retirement, and I left. But I just want to know because um since my children are working, should I sell them the house or? Should I put them just on the deed? Gloria, are you um, wanting to use that put... 400000 in equity to live on, or what's that equity for? The home equity, because I, I wanted to take it to buy a house in, um, in Florida. Well, just sell your I house. Why do you out. have to sell it to your kids? Just sell it and take 400000 and go to Florida. So, but wouldn't it, and wouldn't it be better to, um, to, um, I'm sorry, I know you're the expert on this, but I'm just thinking about my children since they live in New York City already and they're... Your children are grown. Home. They can make their own way. You're broke. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you're broke. You can't take care of everybody else. You're broke. They're like right. grown-up humans. Okay. And so you need to take this equity and go to Florida. You don't have the money to give your children a house. You won't have any place to live if you do. But if I put them on the deed... It doesn't matter. Putting them on the deed is not a magical formula. It doesn't do anything. Like they could pay, they paying the house? If you, No, I do not want your children to go $600,000 in debt so that you can put four hundred in your pocket and go to Florida. No, 
I don't think your sanitation mm-hmm. worker son can afford this house. No, well, they're both working, so. Yeah, and, and I, I don't want to saddle them with the, with your problems. No, th- this is a really clean thing. They need to start talking about it, getting some housing because mom's about to move to Florida. So sell them the house. No, and let them, and let no, they can't afford the house, Gloria. And you don't need to saddle them with a mess. You need to just sell your house. They need to go get them a place to live and be grown up boys, men and stuff. And you need to be in Florida and stuff with 400000 in a paid-for house. And, by the way, you're only 60 years old. You probably need to be doing something since you don't have any money. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm worried about you. I'm older than you, and I'm not retired. You're okay. You can do it. 60-year-olds can still work well, Dave. Apparently. (laughs) I've been here since early this morning. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Gloria, you already have kind of a sticky situation with your retirement and getting COVID last year and trying to navigate all of that. I would not bring your family into this. That's just going to complicate not only the financial aspect, but the emotional aspect of dealing with your sons and them taking on a lot of your burdens. I would definitely keep those two separate. You know, sell your house, like Dave said, and then figure out what you're going to do with retirement. Because, I mean, you're 61. I know that that may feel, you know, a little bit older, but you could potentially have another 40 years. Like, you've got time. Mm-hmm. And so we, we need to come up with a long-term strategy while you still are physically able. And you've got a lot of great time ahead. I mean, we're counting on Dave for another 30 years, so. <laughs> <laughs> You got a while. You can count on Dave going to Cabo at some point. (laughs) Come on, Dave. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's what you need to do, honey. You're trying to get this house to do too many things. It's not capable of doing but one thing, and it takes care of you. That's all it's capable of. It can't take care of you and your kids have a place to live there, and you get money out of it. You're trying to make one thing work too hard. Just sell it. Let them get them a life, and you go to Florida and start your new career. That's what I would do if I woke up in your shoes. Brandon is in Spokane, Washington. Hey, Brandon, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, thanks for having me. Sure. What's up? Um, so, me and the wife, we're, I'm 23 right now. Um, we just got finished up with Baby Step 3, so we got our six-month emergency fund. Oh, and you we don't have any kids or anything. We're just trying to figure out where do we go from here? Do we start saving for a house? I know we are kind of enjoying some money right now. Um, I'm just curious if we stay gazelle intense and save up all we can for a down payment, or what do we do? Is that your next goal, to buy a house? Um, I believe so. We're hoping, yeah, we hope to have a kiddo here sometime in the future, and just trying to, I don't know, want to prepare ourselves for the future. So, Well, that's great. Well, we would... Call that baby step 3B, where you save up your down payment for your house. We don't want you to stay there forever. But, I mean, if that is a goal and you're wanting to bring the baby home into a house that you own, um, then, yeah, go ahead and start saving in that. And then, of course, after that, you know, you're in baby steps four through six, where you're going to start saving for retirement, your kid's college fund, and then paying off that house. I have a feeling you already knew that. I kind of did. Yeah, I... um... Like after baby step three would be baby step four. You knew that. Yes. Yeah. um, We're just, you know, enjoying a little bit of the money. and That's twice you've said that. So you're spending everything now. (laughs) Not quite. We're put, again, we got $18,000 put away into our uh, our six-month emergency fund. That's your emergency Uh, fund. And now if you want a house, you're going to have to quit enjoying so much. Yeah. If you, you know, new goal. New goal. Be intentional. Uh, don't just kind of wander off into stupid land again. You just you just visited there, and um, you don't want to live there. That's why you walked your way out. Don't go back. So stay very intentional, very focused. Keep on the game plan. Yes, you can enjoy your money a little bit. We don't have to go down to beans and rice, rice and beans. You're past that now, but you do need to be intentional. And uh, I have no money past my emergency fund three years from now because I've been enjoying my money is not a plan. This is The Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. 
That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Church Hill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. Christina Ellis, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. Her book, Confessions of a Scholarship Winner, because she's a winner. Uh, big deal, a big deal, because she got $500,000 in scholarships. So she's our one of our resident experts on uh, student loan mess, student going to college debt-free, not falling into the epic trap of student loans. And so, as we all know, well, uh, most of us know uh, by now, uh, President Biden has been attempting to forgive $10,000 worth of student loan debt, 20 if you're a Pell Grant recipient, and uh, so far has not been able to pull off that idea in two years. Um, the latest version is that the... Uh, that it was that the whole idea of him being able to forgive debt was not legal, and so it was taken to court. And uh, so it's in court, and they um, been kicked all the way up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court has agreed to hear it uh, in February, and it comes out today that will be February 28th. Of course, our judicial system always picking the last possible day to do anything, so they're going to put it off as far as they possibly can. Um, slower than Christmas. Oh, wait a minute. Christmas is already here. Yeah, okay. That came up fast. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so a number of conservative-backed lawsuits arose seeking to block the relief, and two, have the, two of them have temporarily succeeded thus far. One lawsuit filed by six Republican-led states argued that debt relief would hurt their state's tax revenues and uh, that of Missouri-based student loan company uh, the other lawsuit was filed by two student loan borrowers who sued because they did not qualify for the full twenty thousand dollars of relief. Okay, uh, two lower courts that received each of those cases ruled the Biden's loan forgiveness plan should remain on pause until the Supreme Court makes a final decision on the legality of the relief. And now it has gone to the Supreme Court, of course, and the Supreme Court today comes out and says we will. Um, I uh, will be taking on both lawsuits that challenged on February the 28th. You know, I can't, I don't know what taking on means. Does well, that, that mean they're going to rule on that day or they're going to start the process of hearings on that day? That was going to be my question because my first thought is, woohoo, thank you. Finally, we have an official date. But I feel like I've said that over and over again where I'm like, Okay, we have a date. We have a date for when the pause ends. We have a date when people will know exactly what to do next. And then we don't have dates that are Somebody's clear. foot is sore from kicking the can so much. Right? Yeah, you think? So it's like, is the 28th the date you think that they're going to rule on it? Or is it just going to officially start I, a long it battle? A, they're taking it. Well, this is Yahoo for you. But I mean, the nation's highest court announced it will be taking on both lawsuits that challenge. We knew that. I just saw another article that says they were, they'll were they hear oral arguments that day. They're, so. Okay, mm. so they're going to begin the process that day. So oh, gosh. six or eight more months. Oh. <laughs> Maybe if we're Man. lucky or you're lucky or you're not lucky. Here's the thing. Um, we told you when this first came up, that before it came up, that it was going to come up. Uh, we told you what was going to happen. 
Um, and uh, we've, we've predicted every step of the way on this and all along the way have been telling you to pay your student loans. Exactly. Just because the government is kicking the can down the road does not mean you your have to life kick should the be can put on hold. Right. You need to clear your life, get victory over this area of your life, and move on with your life. You sit around, and wait on the government to fix your life. Your life's always going to suck. So you can't do that. You've got to lean into this, and you got to say, "This is my deal. I signed up for these loans. I'm going to pay them." now right and it's just going to be much better for you if you've got the loans um well, i'll feel dumb if the government comes no you won't you'll feel proud that you actually honored your obligation that's not dumb yeah i've seen so many people in my instagram dms just cheering that they paid it off even with the the carrot dangling of forgiveness they're still proud of themselves for having paid off those loans so it's like if you do not like that anxiety if you don't like that feeling of being at the whim of the government and the student loan forgiveness pay off your loans like just get it done yeah you don't have to stay in this space perpetual, of unknown of perpetual i promise you someday Ugh, I by mean, a politician mm. by a court system it's going to be forever. It's going to be forever. Don't wait on forever. Don't, don't. Please don't wait anymore. Pay it off now. Eric's in Houston, Texas. Hey, Eric, what's up? Hi, uh, Dave. This, um, I just started li- listening to you not too long ago. I have a friend that, uh, that did your program and, you know, is out of debt. Uh, I have a question. My wife and I were, um, were, were she, she believes in having no debt. So we're going into this. Um, but uh, I've already, you know, calculated how much you know you know uh credit card loan i i that i have um here's the thing i we have five properties right uh three of them are rented out one of them is where we live and another one i'm going to start renting it out because you know it was kind of like out in the country weekend but we don't get out there so i'm either going to put it up for airbnb or uh, rent it out to someone that lives out in that area once when i've added all my my debt I have two mortgages, right? Two loans for, but uh, five properties, but two loans for to pay two of these properties. Do I treat those two loans that uh, as part of a snowball? You know, do I lump them in with that, or I mean, how would I, how would I tackle that? Your personal residence is paid for. Yes. Okay. How much non-mortgage debt do you have? Uh, twenty thousand, twenty-one. Cool. What's and, your household uh, income? Um, so my wife just started working again. So I, I make eighty, um, but my wife makes. Uh, she's transitioning to a position that hopefully will get her, you know, fifty, sixty. But right now, I mean, I'm treating it as if she's bringing in thirty-five a year. So I would say what. Well, 15. I mean, you don't have to treat it anyway. It's just what she is making or isn't making. So yeah. right now, she you make eighty, and it sounds like she's going to make sixty. You're at one forty. You're going to pay off twenty very quickly. If you freaking behave and lean into it. Eric, and uh, now your other two properties, your home is paid for, but your other two properties, what's the balance on those debts? So uh, I actually got a home equity loan on my, the property I live in. It was paid for, and then I got. Oh, so your home is not paid for. So the, the one I live in right now is. Yeah, that's your home. Of the, uh, yeah, yes. It, it's not paid for. No. It has a loan on it. Yes. Okay, how much? Uh, 160. Okay, cool. And what's the other debt, the other mortgage? Uh, 143. Cool. All right. What we would do is put those both in baby step six. Okay. And address those as you get there. And I would pay off your house first, then I would pay yeah. off the rental. Okay. What did you say is the 21000 in debt? Credit cards. Uh, it's credit cards. Uh, and I've, I've got, I've got, um, a 13 in the bank that I'm going to put 12 into oh, God. Um, that. And then um, I, when I do my taxes, I, I always get money back because I deduct more. I don't know if that's a smart thing to do. But no, I, it's not. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, I'm you're I'm loaning the government it. money all year with no interest and yeah, they give it yeah. back to you and you act like Santa Claus lives in DC. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's, so that's go helpful. ahead and go ahead and set your withholding up properly where you don't get a refund and you don't okay. have to pay, but you, you a, a, try to aim it as close to your actual proper amount to be withheld uh, because a refund is simply a loan, interest-free loan to the government. 
Oh, I was going to ask how long he'd been married because he said something very interesting. He said his wife is about no debt. And I'm curious, has he decided that he's about no debt? Because that's a very interesting distinction that his wife doesn't believe in debt. Does he? I mean, because this that's a, quite a few different loans and, and mortgages and well, debts to pay off. Like, it's not like, like he would decide to get out of debt and then she got on board. Maybe I misunderstood. But I, well, I, I hope. I, I, that, yeah. that would be my question is just making sure y'all are this on the same page. This is the guy page. who went and got a home equity loan to buy a rental property. Put, and his, that, put his home at risk again. So, yeah. Hmm. But, yeah, you just drop that all over, all your real estate stuff over into Baby Step 6 and get it paid off there. The great news is you make good money, and if you'll lean into this, you can be 100% debt-free houses and everything in just a few years. You'll be amazed. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. Jay is with us in Boise, Idaho. Merry Christmas, Jay. How are you? Oh, I'm well. How are you? Better than we deserve. What's up? Hey, so earlier this month, there, uh, we were rear-ended in a car accident, and thankfully no major hospitalizations or injuries, but the car is most likely to be totaled. Um, we're now on day 19 waiting for insurance to let us know. Wow. But uh, my question my question for you is, um, uh, we bought the car in 2020 before, uh, it's our, our BD before Dave days, and uh, we owe eight on it. Um, it's worth, um, if they total it, I believe it's worth between 14 to 15,000. Um, so we're thankful for that in the market. Um, but we're going to need to replace it. And I just want to know the wisest way to do this uh, we do not have the cash to pay for a car, and we 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 just need advice. Yeah. Um, well, it it um, you've been through a pretty traumatic thing. Getting hit that hard is a big deal, um, and it kind of makes you think, oh, I need to do this or that. Uh, you're obviously trying to get out of debt, correct? Correct. We are. We uh, we had our um, <laughs> our anger moment was was in October. Okay, and that's when we got intense, and so we're we're brand new on this. We have our we're we're in baby step two. We have our thousand dollar emergency fund. How much debt do you have other than the car? Uh, Thirty. On what? Uh, uh, it's all consumer. It's credit, and then the eight for the car is included in that. I, I'm sorry, you said aside from the car. So about twenty, a little over twenty thousand, and okay. it's credit cards. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh well done. Yeah. What's the process look like with insurance right now? So you said that you've been waiting 19 days. What's their correspondence been like? Do, do like Are they in well, the process of evaluating? Well, yes. Um, they are. Uh, they. It, I'm working with the at-fault insurance, and um, they are – I don't talk to them unless I call them. And um, I think I've talked to her twice. But she, the ball is rolling. She said they're waiting on um, – uh, uh, estimates um, from your, their uh, their person, and I actually missed a phone call from, fr- I think it was from her while I was on hold for you. So I think they're at the process where they're ready to tell me it's totaled uh, or they're going to fix it. We're in a rental car that they're providing, and the, the day they total it, we have four days. I am not in a hurry. I'm, this is not, we don't, we are not in panic mode. We have family. We have friends. We do not have to go buy a car. What's your other car? Within those, my vehicle is a four passenger. It's a Ford Focus or five mm-hmm. passenger. Mm-hmm. We have we have seven in our family though. Mm-hmm. Um, so as as far as being able to um, uh, borrow a car, we could do that in the short term. Mm-hmm. No, I wouldn't do uh, that. So we're I, not, I mean, well, if you had to uh, for a little bit, but until uh, you find a deal. Uh, okay. Um, 
this is going to sound bizarre, so I'm going to go ahead and say that out loud, but it is also exactly what I have done and what I would do if I were in your shoes. The goal here okay. is not short-term comfort. The goal here is live like no one else so that later you can live and give like no one else. So I'm going to use this situation as an opportunity to pay cash for a car with the equity that you get out of this car. So it sounds like they're going to give you seven or eight thousand dollars. I'm going to go buy a seven eight thousand dollar car. Okay. And we, that that got rid of your car good. note. So you just paid off a bunch of debt. Yeah. And the, the 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 only way you can do this and fight through the emotions of what I'm suggesting is to really tell yourself the truth. And the truth is, this is temporary. Yeah. It's not that long. Okay. So what's your household income? 75. So how quick do you pay off the remaining 20, do you think? Our, our uh, every dollar uh, estimate is, is looks like it's going to be 23 months. That's too long with what you make. I was thinking about 10 months. So okay. I, th I think we need to cramp down on the budget and uh, maybe pick up some extra income from somewhere. Uh, maybe even look for something else to sell, but I, I want you out of debt. And about, so that you're buying a better car with an up as an upgrade with cash by this time next year is what I'm thinking. Well, and okay. I want to encourage That's you that for, fourteen to fifteen thousand dollars, if that car gets totaled and you get that amount, you can still get a decent. No, car no, it's, it's not. It, it, he owes eight. Right. And if he gets 16, so he's got that's 6, going to be 8 in his pocket. If he gets 15, okay. it's going to be 7 in his pocket. Mm. So You that, can still get a pretty good car for that's, 7. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Literally before this year, I'd never bought a car over $10,000. <laughs> and I've been driving just fine, guys. <laughs> for so a can, long time. Yeah. For a long yeah. time, simply because yeah. I'm frugal. But the point is, you're moving. it's hard emotionally to move with little kids down from a fifteen thousand yeah. dollar car to a seven thousand dollar car, a fourteen thousand yeah. dollar car down to a seven thousand dollar car, but if you if you re remind yourself over and over and your family that this is for a year, it's temporary. This is an adventure. It's a one year thing or a fourteen month thing or a eight month thing, whatever it is. When you can lean in on this and get it done fast, then you can move up in car with cash. And so I can drive a junker. Right. For a period of time. Well, and that's part of the motivation, too, is, you know, to get it to go from 23 months down to 10 is remember that it's just a season. And the more aggressive you are, the quicker that season passes. Josiah's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hey, Josiah, what's up? Hey, Dave and Christina. Good to talk to you guys. You too. So How can we help? I'm, so I have two job offers for emergency department uh, physician jobs, finishing residency here in Oklahoma. So my question is, job one is uh, an independent contractor. It'd be all self-withholding um, that you would do on yourself. And then job two is a contracted position that would come with benefits. Now, I'm in a unique situation. I'm in the Army Reserve, and so I get a lot of my benefits and health insurance through that. But I'm kind of wondering of what questions I should be asking or what I should look into um, of kind of is one better than the other. And obviously, if they were... They're, they're not both self-employed positions, are they not? So uh, there, one is one is more self-employed. It's still with a contract, but they just it's kind of a 1099 position where the yeah. other one's going to be a W-2. So, yeah. Oh, it is a W-2. So you're actually an employee on the other one. Okay. Correct, yeah. So uh, is the money the similar or...? No, so that's the that's the kind of caveat between them. So job one, that's the independent contractor. Uh, everything's hourly in this kind of field, and so it's like two twenty five an hour. Whereas the other one with the benefits is two hundred an hour, and so that's why I'm kind of is there a is there kind of a threshold that you get to where well you don't need one the benefits better than the other. Correct. I don't need the benefits. It was mostly for kind of the four hundred one k and being able to have that you know four hundred one k versus an IRA if I can put more into that you know vehicle than the other. Well, you can still save for retirement, even if you're not a W-2 employee. Yeah, but if he's not W-2, he can't do 401K is what he's saying. Right. He can, he's li he's he limited to $8,000. So instead of 19 going into your 401K. We can do a self-employed 401K, right? Yeah, you could. That's true. You could do a SEP, um, and you can okay. get just as much in there. So the other question is which – good catch. Uh, the other question is which um, – of these two places, would you rather work if everything was equal? 
So I actually am leaning more towards the the lower paying one. The reason for that is it's due to the um, I can do 24 hour shifts there versus 12 hour shifts just because of the um, the patient load um, that comes into. They're both in kind of rural places, um, and so it kind of I feel like I can knock out a whole bunch more hours you know, and be away from the family kind of less days of the month than working, you know, 12 hour shifts where it's still kind of a full day's work. I'm probably choosing the lifestyle over all the other issues you brought to the table first. Okay. Because both of them are great money. Both of them, you're going to be living, you're going to be living your dream in terms of this is what you've been working for all this time. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to let a 401k dictate or a lack of a 401k dictate uh, a bad lifestyle situation. So I'd, I'd rather pick my family and because they're very, very close. Um, so I, I'm going to go with that one if I'm you, the one that you feel like is going to give you the best quality of life. So good question, sir. We appreciate you joining us. Thanks for being here. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. to make a change with your money? Want to know where to start? Take our three-minute money quiz to get a plan you can follow. Go to RamseySolutions.com and search for Get Started to get a plan for your money. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods of moving and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Christina Ellis, number one best-selling author, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Merry Christmas, America. We're glad you're with us. Emily is here in Springfield, Missouri. Hi, Emily. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Okay, so for a little bit of context, I am almost 21. My husband's almost 23. He works full-time, and I am a stay-at-home mom to a six-month-old. We don't have any student loans or credit card debt. We don't believe in credit cards as well. Um, um, So we only have a car loan and two phone payments, totaling less than $15,000. And I'm trying to convince my husband to do the baby steps because he really just doesn't believe me that they can work. What do, these, do I do that? What do these conversations look like? So, so you say, hey, I've heard of this guy, Dave Ramsey. There's these things called the baby steps. What's his reaction? Well, I, sorry. I showed him like 30 minutes the other night, and he just didn't believe that it was possible. Mm. What, 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 wait, what's the tears for? It's an ongoing fight in our relationship. It sounds like it's pretty. Only, sounds like money is an ongoing fight. Not, not the year. baby steps. It sounds like money is an ongoing fight. So, what's yeah. he do for a living? He just works at an industry, like a factory company. And, what, and, and, and so, he, where is it that he became a financial genius? At 23 um, freaking years old. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't either. I'm really confused about where his arrogance is coming from or even his confidence. I just, I just want to be financially free. Not and you, I him. That this is what I need. And he's like, well, I don't want you working. But I'm like, I'm willing to work. And he changed jobs because the other one didn't. Um, it didn't have benefits. And so we needed benefits for our family being a single income. And it didn't have overtime as well. And so we switched jobs so that way he could have overtime. And he still doesn't like overtime. He's never taken an hour off or extra to work. And I've encouraged him to do so because our son, um, he won't remember this time in his life because he's only six months. 
So I'm like, we need to be paying this stuff off so that way we can save up for stuff in the future. But um, he just doesn't think it's possible. What does he make? Um, right now, it's like less than $18 an hour. Hey, Emily, I'm wondering, are y'all connected to a church? Yes, we are. Do y'all have any mentors yeah. in the church? Yeah, we've reached out and they just kind of let us down on that. I would try and again. I think y'all need some community in your lives to really, I think that this is beyond just a financial issue. It sounds like a bit like a marriage issue. Um, y'all are 21 and 23 years old and those first few years of marriage, they're hard and you need some wisdom in your life. You need people speaking into that marriage because it does sound like he's pretty resistant and maybe what he won't hear from you, he can hear from an older man who's had some years of experience and can pour into him. Because, I mean, it's hard sometimes in those years. And I think just having some of those outside conversations could help. Yeah. And um, we have tried to seek um, to um, search out counseling at our church, but it costs money. And he's like, well, I don't want to pay for counseling, but I'm telling him, like, it's our marriage. You kind of it's either you pay for this or there's no marriage. Mm. Those are some serious conversations. I'm, I'm curious. You guys are in Springfield. Um, let's try to get them into a Financial Peace University class, even if it's not at your church, just because I want you to be around other people who are winning with money, who are winning in their marriages, who are winning in relationships. And a lot of times in those communities, people are not only walking out the baby steps, but they're becoming friends. They're pouring into each other's lives. And I think you guys need to be surrounded by good influences right now. And I'm so sorry you've been hurt by the church, that you've been hurt by the people who you really trusted to pour into you, but I wouldn't give up. Um, there are amazing communities out there. So hang on the line. We're going to have Austin pick up and try to connect you with a local community, a local FPU community, and you know we'll pay for it for you guys to go through it. Yeah. And hey, thank you. um this is going to blow up if you don't, if he doesn't hear you because you're really close to flipping the switch and being done. Um, you, you've about had it in your sweet little voice. I can hear an amazing amount of anger and resentment towards this prideful husband of yours. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he, he's doesn't want to go to counseling. He doesn't want to work overtime. He doesn't even want to watch a YouTube uh, about how to handle money when he makes $18 an hour. Um, and he's 23 years old. So, I mean, this guys he has got um, – he, he is going to get um, – he's either going to choose to learn some new things or they're going to get forced on him by his stubbornness. He's getting ready to get a knot knocked on his head by life. Um, and, I, um, yeah, his, yeah, uh, somehow you, you need to get someone to coach you, a pastor, a, a counselor or somebody on how to speak to him because honey, you're close to being done with him. And we're not, you, I know how these things come down. Once you have had it, you will be done and we won't be able to get you back to him and no matter what he does, cause he, he, and he's not wise enough to ascertain how 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 far in the hole you are right now so you're, you're going to have to get somebody there to help you kiddo but hang on we will get you into financial peace university for free it's hard to argue with that what can it hurt we're sitting here watching netflix anyway so we might as well get up off our butt and go down to the church and go to a class and if you'll just do that dude um we can help you but um i can't help you know, you, you can, um, I mean, you can hit a horse with a two before, but it won't make him drink. <laughs> Ouch. Um, you've seen these stories, Dave, over and over again, where there's a very resistant spouse. It doesn't, it doesn't end well. Have you ever found like any type of like, I don't know. There's no magic tricked. formula. Yeah. I mean, to, to, you know, but what ends up happening is if you just stand in the middle of the road and defy life it will run over your butt mm. you know and he's going to get his little butt run over that's what's going to happen because he's just shaking his fist at everything and uh, it's going to get his fist broken is what's going to happen so here we go but i hope not i hope he can come around sooner than that 
I'm afraid I know this guy. I might have been him in another life. This is The Ramsey Show. Still on baby step number one, huh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Thank you for joining us, America. Christina Ellis, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. So if you're 23, 33, 43, 53, 73, one of the hallmarks of people who live a high-quality life is that they are perpetually curious about things they don't understand or have experience with or knowledge of. And um, especially an area of your life that is bringing you pain. And so when I had babies and we brought them home from the hospital, they did not send me a manual. I had no idea what to do. Um, I mean, I had been raised by humans, so I had somewhat of a idea there, right? And I had people in our life that uh, were around us, but I did not know how to be a parent at 23 years old. So I could just blindly walk into that with arrogance and pride and say, well, it's my kid. I get to decide, which that's a true statement. It is my kid. I do get to decide. Or I can start reading books on parenting. I can start taking a class on parenting. I can watch videos on parenting and I can agree with or disagree with what I'm seeing and thereby start to form out of my curiosity my own process, which is exactly what I did. And I raised three kids that are all successful adults. And so far are raising successful grandkids. Those kids are raising kids. So, um, but I didn't know anything about it, but I I didn't just start out as young and dumb and stay that way. Right. You're, you are the walking example of that curious person, but what, what if somebody's not like, can they, you you can decide to be curious. Right. You, you can decide to be, oh, I've got all this figured out at any age. But if you're sick, listen, if you're broke, please don't tell people about your opinions on money. You should be very quiet because you're apparently wrong. If you have been divorced six times, I don't want to read your book on marriage. You shouldn't be telling people how to do relationships. You suck at it. You know, I mean, if, if, if you're 450 pounds, don't write a book on physical fitness. That's ridiculous. And I don't care what your age is. That's just stupidity and pride. 
And so there's things today at 63 years old that I don't know about, but I'm not going to pose as an expert on those things and, and become belligerent with my wife about those things. So that's what that young man in that last call is facing. He, the, the antidote to him it, or for him, he's going to have pain in every area of his life because he's going to approach every area of his life like he is right now with fear and anger. And, and stubbornness rather than curiosity. And curiosity goes, you know what? I don't know. But by God, I'm going to find out. I mean, I started going to church as an adult. I didn't know anything. Preacher would say, and you know, when they threw Joseph, Joseph's brothers threw him in the hole. And I'm like, nope, don't know Joseph, don't know the hole, but I will find out by midnight because I don't like being the dumbest guy in the room. I'm going to get open that Bible and figure that out. And that's how I started studying the Bible. I didn't like being the dumbest guy in the room. And so I'm curious. I'm going to find out what this means. I'm going to find out why there's 73 brands of Christianity. Why is why is it we have like 63 brands of Baptists? You know, I, I want to know these things. What is the difference in a free will and a missionary? I want to know. I want to know why that happened. How, how is it that the Church of Christ is born out of the Christian church? I want to know how the United Brethren Church ends up being the United Methodist Church. Why did they drop brethren? I don't know. Poor brethren. I, the, I want to know. You know, and you got to get it, you know, but if you already assume I've got it, I, you know, I'm the complete package at 23. That's so ridiculous. It's funny. Right. Yeah. Were you always curious or do you feel like you had to go through your, you know, obviously the bankruptcy and all the hard knocks you got before you got curious? Like, will this 23 year old have to get I, smacked no, in the face? I think my point is it's a choice. You know, if, if the point is, if something in your life is not working. You've got overwhelming anxiety. You Anger. need to be, be curious about anxiety and be reading Deloney's book, Redefining Anxiety, and listening to every podcast of Deloney, right? A and learning about people in the mental health field and learn the, the, the wide variety of opinions about things in that world. A and, you know, start to identify. But you can't just go, oh, I kind of like my poop. I'm just going to sit in it. You're like, you're, like you're a toddler, you know? And, and so this decide if an area of your life is not working to be curious. It's a decision. That's my point. So I'm, I'm putting myself in that 20 year old, 21 year old shoes, hearing this and being like, yes, he needs to decide. But like how, if you're that person, we all know that person who is just, they think they're right about everything, even though they're completely ignorant, they have no clue, and we've wanted to talk to them, but we just can't get through to them. Like, how? Well, you, you, like, can't, you can't make other people behave. But I'm just, my, I'm pointing out, though, that, that, you know, find success principles and one of the, if you want to be successful, that is. If you want to be average, average in America is not bad. If you want to be mediocre... You can get through this life doing very little and being very little. And you don't have, you're don't you very seldom hungry. I mean, you're going to be okay. But, I mean, if you want to have a sense of traction, a sense of success in your marriage, in your parenting, in your money, in your mental health, in your career, if you want to have a sense of traction, a sense of progress, then, then you are going to decide to be curious in those areas. I can't make you be curious. I'm just telling you that that is a, a necessary element to having a high quality life. And, and so, and you can, you know, integrity is also a necessary element. And that's, that's not a, you know, how do you make someone have integrity? You don't, they just decide as of this moment, I'm going to have fanatical integrity because there's a high correlation between that and people who have high quality lives. And so it's a freaking decision. And, and so, you know, and you can do that. Sometimes you, people make it all the way to 63 or all the way to 53, and they're still just bullheaded and stupid and argue with a wall about w w when the evidence is in front of them that they don't know what the crap they're talking about. You know, so if your broke friends are making fun of your financial plan, you are right on track. Hello, they're stupid. They're broke. That's, I mean, they're, they're, they're stupid in the money area. You know, if your fat friends are making fun of your weight loss program, you know, you're right on track. 
Don't do that. I would just eat whatever I want. Well, by God, I did too. I, I blew up like a, I got so fat during COVID. It was unbelievable. Ate every donut in a 50 mile radius. And so, you know, if I hang out at Dunkin' Donuts, guess what? This is going to happen again. So, you know, you got to decide these things. It's uh, success principles need to come from people who are successful in the area, not people who are failing in the area with an opinion. So, Dave, let's role play for a minute. Let's pretend like the 23-year-old husband was here on the line. What would you tell him? What I just did for the last 20 minutes, yeah. <laughs> Smack him around? It. No, I mean, that's it. It's not, <laughs> I'm not smacking him around. I'm loving the guy. Because that's the thing, He needs dude. a good smack around. He, he needs well, it. Well, <laughs> after talking to her, everybody wanted to. But, right. you know, he, he's scared and he's angry. And his answer to everything is bull up on it and try to prove but I'm just telling you, dude, your track record sucks. And you're not winning in your marriage, you're not winning in your career, and you're not winning in your money. So you probably ought to get curious about all three of those things, whether you're 23, 33, or 83. It's time to change something. That's a word. Ellis Ramsey personality is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. Our question of the day comes from blinds.com. Find out for yourself why blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code Ramsey to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Michael in Florida. I'm recently faced with a dilemma for baby step five. I'm currently in the position where I can either take $30,000 and put it in a prepay plan for my state, Florida, or take that money and invest it in a 529 plan. College prepaid plan has the positives of locking in the future cost of college tuition at today's rate, but has the downsides that if my daughter chooses to go out of state, that the prepay plan will only cover the equivalent cost of in-state tuition. While the 529 plan, I will I will have to consider what the cost of tuition plan tuition is starting in 2034. Which plan fits closest with the Ramsey plan? We tell people never do prepaid college. Never. You've identified one of the reasons your daughter might choose to go out of state. She also might choose to go to trade school. She also might uh, choose a lot of different things. The other reason, anytime you prepay anything, like, for instance, a funeral or tuition or anything over a long period of time, your rate of return on your money, your interest rate, if you will, is the inflation rate of that item. So if you prepaid bread, you know, what you would make, you put $1,000 in bread, you prepaid your bread bill before, you know, and you get free bread, the rest, because you bought it ahead of time for five years. OK, you, you know, however much bread goes up, if it goes up four percent a year, then you're making four percent on your money. If it goes up 18 percent a year, you're making 18 percent on your money. College tuition has for the last 75 years averaged 7.2 percent. So that's what you would average on your money. And mutual funds have averaged 11 and a half to 12 percent. The stock market has. So, A, you're not making as much as you would on good mutual funds in a regular 529, like we tell you to buy. Um, B, she could go out of state. And here's one we could add to this. This is the whole higher ed discussion right now. How many of you think out there in America today, raise your hands, we want to see them. How many of you think that with the epic student loan crisis that we have, And then uh, the fact that colleges attempted to charge the same tuition to put people uh, through online classes during COVID. And uh, 
Now, even when they're going back to school, they're having a less than stellar experience in many cases. Um, the campuses are out of control in a lot of cases. Uh, how many of you think that uh, college is um, it's kind of under attack? Mm. Like, I think higher eds, you know, this idea that they, they went th for about 50 years, they could charge whatever they wanted to charge. But now everybody suddenly thinks they suck. Mm. That was exactly my thought is I'm not sure that college is going to look the same in 15 years. And I don't think it should. No, I, I don't agree. think it should. The system's and broken. even if it does, I don't think it's going to cost as much. Right. That's exactly what I'm I mean. Saying. I don't think it's going to go up 7%. Mm -hmm. faster than anything else has gone up like it has been. I think those days are done because mm -hmm. people are tired of being screwed price-wise by higher ed. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think there's going to be some marketplace pressure on their ability to increase tuition hand over fist, which means your prepayment might only make 4% rather than 7%. Mm hmm. I think COVID woke everyone up. Yep. Now everybody's going, hey, wait a minute. Why are we just blindly accepting these prices and doing whatever it takes to pay it? Like, yeah. that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, that being said, I definitely think, you know, obviously we all believe saving for college is important. Yep. But yep. the prepaid plan specifically really lock you in versus a traditional 529. Well, there's a lot more flexibility there. You're not, if. If higher ed is not able to continue their price increases, your return on investment mm -hmm. here is going to be nominal. Mm -hmm. And that's my that's a that's a new thing that I've never said before because I always felt like tuition was just going to keep going up, and I was right; it had kept going up. But we've had a, they they've had a little bit of a perfect storm hit them between people waking up with borrowed future and you know the documentary that's number one documentary last year. Um, and we're, we're teaching people that uh, stirring up a ruckus in America that that, you know, all degrees are not good degrees. A degree in left handed puppetry for two hundred fifty thousand dollars is stupid, stupid. Yep. And everybody's starting to say that out loud now because you end up, you know, working. I don't know, two hundred fifty thousand dollars in student loan debt and working in, as a barista. Because you can't get a job because you're the thing you studied. Nobody gives a crap about. You got a degree in you know uh, German polka history or something, and then you wonder why America doesn't owe you a living. Well, people are also waking up to the fact that you don't have to go to a fifty or seventy-five thousand dollars school to be successful in life. Like that is not a golden ticket. Yep. Like it's not a guarantee just because you know you went to X Y Z fancy school that you're automatically going to get the big expensive job. Like yes. that's People, just not guaranteed. Know, starting to realize that um, you know, I, I went to the doctor this morning. I have no idea whether that lady graduated from college. She I, may have started her first two years at community college. I do not know where she got her MD, but I left there. You know, much better off medically. You know, that's why I went. So there you go. I do not know where my dentist went to school. I have no idea. I have all my teeth, but I don't know where he went to school. So. Well, and here's the thing. I don't want to knock fancy private schools. You know, I do. I, do. <laughs> I mean, I went to Vanderbilt. I love Vanderbilt. You went to Vanderbilt for free. Right. Okay. And that's my point is get the best education you can afford. If you can get a full ride to Vanderbilt, if you can get a full ride to an Ivy League school, Great. But if you can't afford that, there's no shame there. And you can get a great education and a great job going to community college first, then transferring to a public university. Like where you go to school is not what's going to make you successful. You are what makes you successful. Ding, ding. There's a secret sauce right there. Preach it, sister. Mm. I like it. That's how it works. I love that the education system is getting challenged. I hope we're having a totally different conversation 10 years from now about yeah. all the change that's happened. Well, I mean, anytime you have blind acceptance of something, then you get blind people that accept it. I mean, it's just, it's just, oh, God. So, yeah, it's uh, and the stupid butt stuff you people are allowing to go on on these campuses in the name of whatever. Good Lord. But, Who wants to send your child into the cesspool like that? But Dave, a college needs a rock wall and a lazy river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For um, 20000 extra dollars a year. Ugh. So answer to your question, Michelle or Michael, um, is um, 529 where you pick the mutual funds and they don't move unless you move them. 
and you do that with your Smart Vester Pro. You do not do prepaid college because you're locked into one certain state. You do not do prepaid college because you are locked into college. Your daughter might want to be a uh, computer coder, and uh, you don't need four years of college to do that. You need co code school to do that. It's a different thing. So that that's, you know, and we do not know what's going to happen to higher ed. I do not think it's, I do not think education is bad, but I do not think all education has a marketplace value either. As a matter of fact, I'm positive German polka history does not have a marketplace value. The only job there is for German polka history is teaching other people German polka history. That's the only job there is. And so it's a pretty narrow, nuanced thing. I'm not even sure it's an actual degree, but it's kind of fun <laughs> to make fun of it. So anyway, but yeah, so that's the point. So, you know, if you're, but it is, it is a four-year business degree a good idea if you're going to be in business? You bet. You're going to learn a lot, of, a lot of good stuff. So all education is not bad. We're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, but I'm just telling you, this baby's in trouble. It's been misbehaving. And so uh, I would not do prepaid college ever, but for sure in this environment, I wouldn't do it. This is The Ramsey Show. Christina Ellis, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. You hear me say it all the time, everyone needs a will. That's true. It's a basic adult responsibility, and there's just no good excuse to not have one. Now, it's a good time of the year as we approach the first of the year to reset some things in your life. Getting your will done is one of them. And you've heard me recommend an online will as the fastest, most cost-effective way to get your will taken care of. But I get a lot of questions asking if a simple online will is right for everyone's situation. I get that. What if you need a trust or you need a mirror will or what kinds of power of attorneys do you need? With those questions in mind, our team built a quiz to help you find the right option for you. You get custom results on the quiz and um, like where you're married, where are, are you married, where do you live, even the size of your estate, and you'll understand exactly what you need for your specific situation. It is a free quiz. So go to RamseySolutions.com slash Will's Quiz. Check it out for yourself, and it'll start you on the process of getting the right will in place and you need to do that now dan is in lima ohio hi dan welcome to the ramsey show thanks dave for taking my call sure what's up appreciate it well i recently um had knee surgery both both total knees so Ooh. and as i'm going to physical therapy that happened december 2nd as i'm going to physical therapy they're telling me i can no longer kneel and I can no longer climb, and I am a carpenter, and that's what I do. So it's like, okay, I have to do something different. Um, I do have options. I can go ahead and retire. I have to take a penalty, and I would draw approximately $3,118 a month until the day I die. So that's not a bad option, but it's like I want to make sure I do the right option. If I would make it until 62, I'd draw almost $3,800 a month. How old are so, you? I'll be 58 in January. You're a union carpenter, I take it? Yes, union carpenter, yes. Okay. So the rant and rave about uh, college and everything else like that, for you people that ain't smart, a union trade is a great thing. Pipe fitter, boiler maker, carpenter, yeah. it's all a great thing. Yeah. What do you What do you make a year back when you were still uh, uh, swinging a hammer? I make about 65 a year, 60. Okay. Good for you. Depends on how much overtime I work, which is a little, you know, usually a lot. Do you have any other savings? 
Yes, we. I also had a, the carpenter union comes with also an annuity, and I've got like thirty four thousand in that, and I've pulled that out of the carpenters union and put it in Edward Jones in stocks. But you know, as you can see, the last year the stock market has not been friendly to my to my uh, investments there. So, mm-hmm. um, I would I would like to know more about switching it to a a mutual fund of some sort. But you know, we'll. They'll be decent through a year like this year. Um, well, I, I mean, you you would be me. selling something that's down and buying something that's down, so it's as good a time to do it as any, as far as that switching that over goes. Okay, so you're you're not going to be a carpenter anymore, and um, you're going to be making thirty one hundred dollars, right? Right. So, what are you going to do now? Well. And that's the thing. I could go do something else for a couple of years, and I'd like to because I would like to pay off my mortgage. Well, I mean, you're young. you got a lot of things you could do. you just not be a carpenter. you would be something else. And this is what we call an right. encore career. It's the second act. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you're 58. Yeah. You still have lots of time, even... Even just in general, I think we had this conversation a few weeks ago where it's nice to keep your brain active and moving and doing things, um, even if it's not the career you've known for so many years, just to have that stimulation versus... I bet you on those super, super cold days or those super, super hot days, you had something pop into your head you'd like to do someday. You, you know, I messed my shoulder. I got another story. I messed my shoulder up in 13. So I... um. Went back, got fixed, tore off my rotator, tore off my labria, tore off my biceps. So I get it fixed. I go back to work a year later, same pains, you know. So I go see the doctor. The doctor says, you need to do something different. Your carpenter is tearing your shoulder up. So I started my own business. I started a Maco tool franchise, and I did that for like five years. And I had a son-in-law that moved back from Florida, and I was like, I was like, come along with me. Give this a try. And he did awesome at it. So I set him up in that business, and I went back being a carpenter. So, and then recently, my knees, you know, I knew they were bad, you know, and then you go get them MRI. So if you can do a Mac tool business, you can do another business, right? Yeah. So I'm telling you, those days that you were laid up in the hospital or those days that it was too hot to be outside or too cold to be outside and you were out there anyway, you were thinking, someday I'm going to go do blank, 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 and you ought to go do that now. That's all I'm saying. You're you're not a carpenter anymore. Your doc told you. You're done. Do you think you should go ahead and take the early penalty and get the 3118 or wait on that? Like do another career that fully funds his life? I mean, yeah, if you can... Just eat. If you can make enough to live and not take it now and take it at 65, that's fine. Uh, that's going to be a lot better deal for him. Um, but yeah, Or take it now and still go get money. Right? Well, Either it, one's okay. Yeah, if you if you do take it now, it, it, you could still get a job that's a little bit more of a passion project. Like if you want to go you know, volunteer, not volunteer, but work in a nonprofit or something like no, that, I, I guess that's I, no, the case. No, I want him to go make some money. So get a real like he, he a ran, full... he ran a business making money with the tool business before. So best case scenario, he waits till sixty two. Don't touch that, and then let it get to where it's thirty eight hundred. Either one's fine, but it, if he takes it now, it does take the pressure off mm. trying to make the other thing happen immediately because you got money to eat with. Yeah. So I'm probably going to take it now just for that reason. But I, I'm still going to say and mm-hmm. go start another thing, man. Yeah, you've done not, it before. You're not going to kick your feet up on on 3000 bucks a month. You're not done at that. So you, you need some more than that. So. Well, and even just beyond the money, you talk, You told the story recently about your fishing friend who took off for a while, then he got fat, and then yeah. went back to work. Yeah, he didn't, And he didn't enjoy it. A lot of people, you know, they get all that time back, and then they're like, wait a minute, I want to do something. I'm excited to do something. I want to get out of the house. Yep. That's exactly right. So there, there's, there's a benefit of that. And I, I just think... You know, um, all I'm saying is you, you've been through all this pain physically and, and now you don't really have the option of doing this anymore. So the only question is whether you take the retirement now or you wait and take it later doesn't really matter. Either one's going to be fine, but neither case is enough. So you're going to be create, you need to go create some income doing something else. That's the important part of this particular discussion. By the way, folks, it is good to stop and re- recognize this, okay? Buford did a book called Halftime, and he said that uh, men in particular, the data tells us, 
spend the first half of their life in acquisition and the second half of their life seeking significance. Women too, but the, he had, the study he did was on men and the research that he had was on that. And if you don't reach for significance in that second half, you tend to get off the rails and, um, you know, get into drugs or, you know, run off with a secretary in a red convertible or whatever, that kind of stuff, right? So, you, so guys, you, you got to need to aim at something in the second half. Now, sometimes your second half starts at 30. Sometimes it starts at 58. You know, what's your second half? It does, it's not an age thing. It was there's a like an arc to your career, an arc to what you're doing. And the first half of it is acquisition. The second half is significance. The important part of that conversation is the other piece of data that's out there that we do know is that your highest, the t- typical person, your highest income potential decade is the decade of your 50s, 50 to 60. Because that's the point in your life that all of your experience in your career field is now valuable. And before then, you've been gathering that experience by making mistakes. Now all of those mistakes are called experience. And and you really know things that you just didn't know before. It puts you in a sweet spot to go really cha-ching. And and so that's why this encore career thing comes up is very, very, very important. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Christina Ellis, number one best-selling author, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today as we talk to you about your life and your money. Merry Christmas, America. Thanks for being with us. The phone number here is 888-825-5225. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. All right, we're going to start off this hour with Luke in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Hi, Luke. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. It's an honor. Honor to speak with you, sir. How can we help? Um, so I was calling to get some advice um, because I'm getting married and six months and moving out of home for my parents. And I'm wondering what you would advise as kind of like a uh, nest egg or just a small, it feels like I should have some money set aside to pay for, you know, like furniture and, you know, the deposit and things like that. Do you have an emergency fund right now? I do. I have $1,000. I'm on baby step two. Okay, wonderful. Well, Dave, I am curious how much beyond the deposit. So you have your deposit for the apartment. I mean, if you're on baby step two, I'm thinking pretty cheap. But Dave, what's your take? Yeah, you need to. Well, I mean, basically, it's not do you need more than $1,000 in savings? Uh, that's not the question. Uh, the question is how you're going to fund the setup. And um, you, so you, what do you make? What's your income? 50000 Okay. And so you've got the money coming in. You don't have any overhead to amount to anything, right? Correct. Yeah. So you're going to slow down your debt snowball enough to cover your deposits, to get your utilities set up, to buy a garage sale couch and a Craigslist kitchen table and uh, get some dishes while you're at that garage sale. 
Uh, so you got something to eat off of and, uh, you know, just set the place up cheap and then, uh, then you can upgrade from there as you go along towards the marriage date and, and with the, uh, with the wedding gifts as well, that'll help put a little nicer things in the cabinets, right? Um, get you a toaster and whatever else you got to have there. Right. So, uh, you know, but, but the big things you're going to have to do is avoid, just go retail you know, spend twelve thousand dollars on furniture. You're not going to do that. You don't have twelve thousand dollars. Well, hey, I sure. think, yeah, I think you really need to go in with like a frugal mindset, right? Rather than asking the question like, how much, you know, should I have in a typical scenario? It's like, you know, how cheap can we do this in a way that we still get to live in a place that's not, you know, a terrible spot? But how can we save the most money in this situation? Yeah, I mean, you, you know, talk to the apartment complex, find out what your deposit is, or you know what that, you know what that is, you know what your first month rent is. They're all going to be due up front. You also got to check with the utility companies, find out exactly what those are. Those are fixed numbers. And then just give yourself a used furniture budget and just get in there and start with nothing and start, you know, super, super, super cheap and keep working your debt snowball uh, all the while. Who's paying for the wedding? My family. I'm paying for a little bit of it. I've already paid for the honeymoon, um, but... The, the wedding isn't much of an expense. I'd say less than probably $500 is okay. what I'll pay. How much debt do you all have? Uh, so I only have like 10000 uh, but my fiancé has about 80000 so we have 90000 Well, there's not a we yet. After you're married, we have 90000 But, yeah, right now she's paying right. hers, you're paying yours until the actual wedding occurs. And then we combine everything and we attack from there. But, I mean, the two of you can go – shop for a garage sale couch um together and you're you're buying it but you're both going to end up sitting on it um certainly after marriage and so go pick some of these things out have have an adventure with this stuff and you know uh, sharon and i did this stuff luke i mean when we got married it was uh if you go to the rich end of town there are people that will put a eight thousand dollar nine thousand dollar leather couch out on their uh in their garage sale for for a hundred bucks because they, they got to get out of the way literally the kitchen table we still use to this day i got for free off craigslist from a lady in the rich part of town who just didn't want it yeah just trying to get it was, rid of it it was literally fully wood like a fourteen hundred dollar table that she didn't want to take the time to take somewhere else so i was like i'll take it and i just it does make me think of that season when we were first you know, married when I was first getting out in the world, even with apartments, I would literally just refresh apartment websites trying to find deals. So I, I had my eyes set on this really nice apartment that was, it was, I'm going to date myself a little in Nashville. It was $900 a month. And I was like, I cannot afford that. I kept refreshing, keep ref refreshing. One time it refreshed and they said they had a special for $550 a month. And I jumped on it. I went in that day. So it's yeah. like I was just so hungry to find something that I could afford yeah. that it was less about, you know, like, what's the typical apartment price? Can I afford that? I was aggressive in trying to find the best deal. Turns the whole thing into a game. Yeah. It's actually, yeah, it's It's fun. just a game. It's a game of how, how, how cheap can we do this and how, how great a deal can we get? What kind of bargain can we get? And, you know, that's how you get started. And, and the good news is, is that this is not a forever couch. No. Unless you it's, get a really nice one, like no, our kitchen no, table. No, it's still not a forever couch because it's not your couch. I mean, it's just a, it's just a it's a hundred dollar thing to sit on, right? Or a fifty dollar thing to sit on. That's all it is. And you're gonna you're gonna upgrade later, and you're gonna upgrade later, and you know you're gonna move, and you're gonna do all kinds of stuff. And so it's you know two years from now, none of this will still be there. You will have moved on. Now, in your case, you've kept the table because it was a very cool table to Ooh, start with. Table. But yeah, so but the uh, but I'm just saying I, I don't we don't have any of that furniture 40 years later that we started with. <laughs> I'm just telling you, not one stick of it that I'm aware of. So uh, but that, you know, it's OK. It's just a place to start. So the point is, you don't need a bigger emergency fund. How much do I need to have in savings? No, you just need a budget to move in that encompasses your deposits and a little bit of setup costs for furnishings uh, from the garage sale in the rich people and the town. All right, let's go to Ka Tim in Camden. Hi, Tim. How are you? Hey, real good. Thank you guys for uh, taking my call today. Uh, I got a quick one for you here. Um, I have had a recent change of employment. Uh, I am now in the sales industry. I'm an uh, outside sales guy. And I'm traveling our large state here, 
And I have an opportunity coming up to get into, uh, right now, the vehicle that I have, I'm putting, I don't know, 45,000 miles a year on this thing. Wow. And uh, so I'm going to go through these cars pretty quick. I do have a payment going on on this vehicle right now. I have a stipend from my employer. I get mileage. But uh, a new plan that, or a new possibility is coming out is that I have the possibility of the future for like uh, for 160 some odd dollars a month for a mid-sized vehicle. I can lease the vehicle through my employer. They take care of all the stuff. Uh, you know, you can't drive a car that cheap. That's a, that's cheaper than you can drive a car on your own. So do it. You're right? destroying a car a year at 50,000 miles a year. You're destroying its value. You're running the maintenance costs up. You're running up everything. So you can't, 160 bucks a month, and they're furnishing everything. Yeah, that's called an employee benefit. That's not a lease. As long as you're out of it when you quit there, I'm in. Do it. Christina Ellis Ramsey, personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. Last-minute gifts do not have to be less meaningful. If you're still looking for a last-minute gift, we can help. We won't tell on you. Instead of grabbing a random gift card at CVS, oh, Lord, help you. Seriously, you were going to do that, weren't you? Yeah, don't do that, okay? You can gift. Uh, you can give a gift that inspires life change, uh, like coming to one of our live events. Live event tickets make a great stocking stuffer. They're downloadable, and, uh, of course, you can buy them right up until the last moment. Just print them off, right? So we're heading down the road for our Building Wealth live event tour for the spring here, where me and the other Ramsey personalities, George Camel, Rachel Cruz, Ken Coleman, Dr. John Deloney, will walk through our simple but proven plan to get out of debt and build wealth. We're going to kick off the tour in Nashville on January 12th, and then Indianapolis, Indiana, February 16th, Austin, Texas, February 23rd, Salt Lake City, Utah, April 24th, Anaheim, California, May 2nd. These events are selling out. Uh, you do not want to wait around on this, even if you're not doing it for Christmas. Event passes start at just $49, and um, you can take a few extra. If you want to get a group deal on it, just holler at us. We'll make you a group deal. I mean, we're, we're, we're up for getting you there. We want you to see this stuff and to learn this material. RamseySolutions.com slash events. RamseySolutions.com slash events. Lena is in Charlotte. Hi, Lena. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can we help? Question. So my husband and I are debating paying off the house. Um, I know you've had this one before or um, investing money. He, we're on, I think we've completed up to baby step four now. Um, he likes to have cash on hand just, you know, if the market does go down and we want to buy another house for investment purposes, um, fully funding, but we're just kind of in the predicament. Do we pay off the house now? Do we pay it off in chunks, like throw a big chunk this year, then another chunk next year? Wanted to get your thoughts. Uh, how long have you been listening to this show? Um, a while. And he sends me, I, I think I know what you're going to say, but I kind of also want him to hear it. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you're going to work our plan, you already know what you're supposed to do, right? If you're right. going to work your plan, then you get to make up your own plan. Right. So, but yeah. um, we know from data in 30 years of doing this, that the shortest distance between where you are and wealthy is to get everything paid off and stop borrowing money because you get control of your most powerful wealth building tool, which is your income. 
And, um, you know, the vast majority of the millionaires that we studied in the millionaires, largest study of millionaires ever done had paid off their home early. And, um, and it frees up that house payment. I mean, when you start investing a house payment, it turns into a million dollars so fast. It's scary. When you were talking about what he wants to do in terms of investing, did you mention the possibility of getting another house? I thought I heard that. Yeah. Using the cash on hand to buy a rental instead of paying off their home. Oof. Yeah. So, because we're max, I mean, we max our four hundred one ks. Um, we, we put money in our Roths. So, uh, but instead of you know putting all eggs in one basket, that was kind of our next, especially if the market does go down. Yeah. So you've been listening to the show for a while. Has he been listening for a while, or what's kind of his attitude towards the baby stuff? Yeah. He 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 likes, and, and I laugh when you guys say you know the feeling of having zero debt if you do pay it off. He just has a certain dollar threshold that he likes to see in savings. And I think he's just scared to see that go below that. <laughs> um, so I think he's just the comfort of having cash on hand. How much cash have you got? Um, savings, mm-hmm. about $300,000. dollars mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Just Is it just sitting in a high-yield savings account? Or what, what are you all doing with the money right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's costing you 2500 bucks a month right there. Opportunity cost. That's dumber than a rock. That's not comforting. <laughs> that's just stupid. How much is your mortgage? Um, we're on a 15-year. It's about... Now, right what's your right balance? Two. Oh, 205 Pay it off today. Now. This is ridiculous. You'd still have a ton of money left. You're still sitting on a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. What is it makes you comfortable? My God, pay that off today. You're okay. sitting there making one percent on your money and calling that comfortable. No, no, no. What do you guys make? You must make five or six hundred thousand. What do you make? No, um, like four. Yeah, I figured. Lord, honey. Y'all do whatever you want to do, but you called here. Um, yeah, this is it. your your situation. Financial planners uh, worldwide would call you ridiculous, sitting on three hundred grand cash at one percent. I mean, I I don't think you're going to find anybody who goes, oh, that's wise. Um, I mean, I I like having cash around. I believe in liquidity. I believe in having an emergency fund. I believe in having access to your money, but. Um, yeah, you guys need to write a check today. Hey, listen, pay it off, and if you hate it, you hate being debt-free with only 100000 in the bank, in four or five months, just go get you another mortgage. You'll feel better. You'll never do that, by the way. Once you pay it off, you're going to go, oh, I was completely getting my – that was just – no way I'm going back. Right. Well, and they make – they I should make have asked money. earlier what the numbers were. Whew. I'm like, they make enough money, they could buy that rental property soon. They can get the bank account back up soon. I'm and like make, racking my make, brain. You make 400 k. You can buy another rental by the end of the year right. in cash, and not and never have any debt. I mean, you're sitting on a hundred thousand dollars after we do this deal. You need to pay this house off before the sun goes down. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> do it right now. Oh my gosh! I think that I think that's a good word. Gosh, that's mm. yeah. My brain is like I'm racking my brain trying to think through any reasons or arguments that he might have that are valid. There's not any. There's not any. That this is just what 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 happens in this situation is the kids they make a lot of money. I knew it. I could smell it. I told you. What do mm-hmm. you make? Five six hundred? Oh, just four hundred. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So they make a ton of money. And they work like crazy people. They work hard. They put a lot of hours in, probably carry a lot of stress. And the that pile of money does give you comfort when you're working that hard because you can, if anything, if you just want to do something, you can just do it. It gives you lots of options and margin and that kind of thing. And so what he's receiving from that is a comfort. It is an emotional comfort. But what you're trading it for is the emotional discomfort of losing thirty to forty thousand dollars a year return on three hundred grand sitting there doing nothing. I mean, forty thousand bucks a year is substantial loss. That's huge. You know? 
and uh, I mean thirty thousand at or three hundred thousand at ten percent is thirty thousand. So I mean, whatever you want to calculate it at, but thirty thousand that's 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 serious money. Mm. That's a nice vacation. I'm just saying. That's a nice vacation. And, and so. It's a, but, lot but what, what, it's a lot of things. What, what you don't realize when you're in his situation, in Lena's situation, is um, that the comfort and the margin and the flexibility that all that cash gives you intellectually, the trade off is emotionally, you haven't realized you are carrying weight with that mortgage. And you have, you just kind of set it in the back of your mind, but it's still in your mind. Mm. And as Dr. Deloney talks about, your body knows that it's there and so when you pay this off you're going to get a different kind of piece that is actually more thorough a more thorough piece than you're getting from this pile of cash the cash is a mirage that's what i'm saying this is the ramsey show Ellis Ramsey, personality number one, best-selling author, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Jason and Shannon are with us. Hey, guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good to have you all. Where do you live? Minnesota. All right. What part of Minnesota? Uh, Minneapolis. Well, Lakeville, Minneapolis area. Yeah. Cool. Well, good to have you. Welcome to Nashville. And uh, you apparently sent some cold weather our way. It's coming the like, <laughs> day after tomorrow or something. It's going to get no, like super cold. This isn't cold. We left. This is not no, cold. This is not we cold. Like no, it's, it's, not it's, cold. it's going down to single digits <laughs> okay. in two days here. Okay. So way to go, guys. All right. How much debt did you pay off? So we paid off about $1.6 million. Oh, 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 my gosh. Okay. Uh, and uh, how long did this take? Well, backtrack a little. We We actually were on your plan in michigan started our family there and then stepped into business with my father-in-law and i had called you when i was still in michigan which would have been like let's say 2008 and you told me not to go into partnership but i did and um move from out of state to a new state so we we tried a different way of borrowing money and building businesses and get into a partnership and then my wife uh, actually got into a terrible accident hit by a semi with my daughters mm. and um, made it pretty difficult mm. they wow. shaved off my hair took off my skull I was in a coma for 11 weeks wow. not good wow. I was just getting worse pretty much a vegetable wow. it was lots of prayer the reason I was came, came out of my coma I used to be in a wheelchair we learned how to walk, talk, eat, all of it. Only Jesus. Oh, my God. All him. All Jesus. Only How Jesus. long ago was that? 2015. Seven years. And, I mean, you're, like, completely Yeah, I had neurosurgeon amazing. Dave come in and tell me to pull the plug up, all four of them. And I just, I knew the Lord would heal her, and I needed people to pray. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. God is good. Amen. Mm. Amen. Way to go, y'all. What a, what a story. And so you were deeply in debt at this point and in a partnership with your dad. And the boat was sinking. And meanwhile, you're in a coma. And this thing's, what, what kind of a business? Uh, actually, Jimmy John's. Yeah. Okay. All right. Huh. <sighs> So you had a bunch of franchises. Did, yes. Sir. So how'd, got, you, how'd got, you get out? What happened? So I got up to eight locations. and Because um, that's all, a good franchise. It is. Great, okay. great franchise. A lot of integrity. Uh, southern half of Minnesota had a lot of ground to cover to get to each one and just started putting 
C plus people and A spots and the numbers just don't work as you're taking loans out on multiple stores. Um, so we decided to divide with my father-in-law, which was in itself an answer to prayer just to give us four and him four. And at that point was about end of 2017 that we really started to just tackle, okay, how do, how do we get out of this mess? Because it was heavy. I mean, it was sleepless nights. Very heavy. So you're two um, years after the accident. You yes, split, yes. The, split the stores up. Correct. Yep. And you end up with $1.6 in debt. Is that all on the stores, just about? Uh, some was my home. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was more debt with all eight, but he assumed four of them. And so yeah, I just you got, the you got You cut Correct. the debt in half because you got the partnership. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So what did, what did this journey look like? How did you pay off that much debt? So, um, like I say, sleepless nights. And I began to just get into stores and try to just manage what I had and to figure out what this would look like to pay it off, what the time frame would look like. Um, while she's at home trying to help with some bill pay and just not driving, uh, my oldest turned 16, was old enough to help. It was just hard to be on the road when you got one adult that can drive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. So you just turned the stores around. I I did some. um, I mean, COVID actually really helped as Mm -hmm. far as we already did pick up and delivery. So you didn't have to reinvent that piece. Mm -hmm. Um, But I had actually had them for sale in 2019 Mm -hmm. and didn't end up closing the deal uh, till September of 2022. So I sold three of the four. I just operate one and may look at doing another one now with cash, uh, two stores in our hometown and not have all the travel and the overhead. Wow. You all are amazing. Your story is so powerful and just so encouraging to all the people who are listening, who are in the ditch right now, who feel like, you know, their life is just a mess and they can't get out. What what would you tell those people who just feel so discouraged? I start my day with Jesus and hard work. Um, but ultimately, Dave's philosophy of just paying off debt, like, uh, let me try it. I can go get a mortgage. I can go get SBAs. I can go get lots of loans if I want. But I want to at least try this side of the fence to say we paid it off. So to have kind of a goal and to be able to reach it. Um, Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 1.6 million. You guys not only reached it, you crushed it. Well, the hole was pretty big. Mm. But um, it was nice to have assets to be able to sell. So um, that that took a lot of work just to make them valuable enough to sell and chose good locations and just was able to have an exit strategy and still a great uh, relationship with my Mm in-laws. And um, so very, very grateful just to be able to be that example to my kids. Wow. Mm. But even before we sold the stores, we had worked off paying off all the debt. So there's no debt but our mortgage, mm-hmm. our home. Okay, so you were oh. clear up until then, and then the, that final uh, closing last last fall took care of it. Yes, sir. Or this fall. Yeah, September. Right. September. September yeah. yeah. Wow, just about three months ago. Yeah. And and that's one thing I'd say, Dave, is that I, and we've listened to your show a ton over the years. The people that do get to do a debt free scream and are here right after their mortgage, it doesn't quite sink in until you're a few months down the road and realize, like, you don't have a payment. Right. It'll just come to my mind, like, the mortgage. No, the mortgage is gone. Yeah, you got a paid for house, a paid for business. Over so you got, and over. You've got to be over a million dollar net worth. Easy. Actually, we were on your millionaire theme hour here maybe two months ago. Okay. So we're at about. 3.5. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Way to go, guys. That is outstanding. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, Fabulous. Can... Shannon, are you driving again? I am. All right. How long ago did you start driving? Um, I had I had eight seizures, so I haven't driven I really four or five months ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Just recently. Yeah. All right, cool. Because with a brain injury, I started having seizures, unfortunately, and I've had a total of eight now, but... I haven't had one in a year and four months, so I'm very happy about that. Amen. That's good news. A lot to be thankful for. Yeah, 2022 is a big year. It is. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Way to go, y'all. Thank you. Whoa. That's I, impressive. All right. We I, have a uh, I, the living. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I do want to say, though, for people that are doing this, trust me, you guys can do this. It gets frustrating, but just stay focused. You can do this. It feels so good. Just keep at it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. 
So the overall, I, I didn't finish up, I guess, but the uh, the overall time, I guess, for really from the, it's from 15, so it's a seven-year journey, we would say, to get out of debt. Well, at about five years is when we actually started to get out of debt. The okay. first two years of her coming out of the hospital was just trying to... That's right. You're still in the partnership. So right. 17. Correct. 17. Yes, yeah. Okay. All right. So five years. And um, your your range of income during that five years? Uh, varied anywhere from probably 200 up to about 400. Okay. But the income isn't really what mattered. It was the sale of the assets. That's what that is. Yes, sir. Yeah. So the getting, getting rid of the three store, three of the four stores. But there's a lot more profit when you don't have the overhead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the rumor. <laughs> well done. All right. We've got the Live and Give bundle for you, the Baby Steps Millionaire's book, the Total Money Makeover book, and Financial Peace University, in your case, for you to give away. And I will pass that on, and you'll be able to pass it on. Way to go. Jason and Shannon, $1.6 in five years making 200 to 400 count it down let's hear a debt-free scream three two one we're We're debt free yeah (laughs) that's how it's done man what a story powerful this is the ramsey show of the day, Philippians 4.12, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Oscar Wilde said, true contentment is not having everything, but in being satisfied with everything you have. Christina Ellis, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Alexandra is with us in Oakland, California. Hi, Alexandra. How are you? Good. How are you, Dave and Christina? Hi. Hi. Better than we deserve. Merry Christmas. How can we help? Hi. Um, so basically, I just wanted to know what you think is the best time when dating like, um, is to ask about finances, like financial goals, debts, income, and things like that. Are you currently dating someone right now? No. Okay. I like this question. So it's like for future person that you meet. Yeah. And just like when you're on a dating, like, you know, when you're meeting new new people and stuff like that. Mm, that's a great question. Dave, I'm curious about your take because well, I haven't dated in 50 years. <laughs> I don't have any idea. <laughs> well, and what's funny is I've I only like... had one date for 50 <laughs> years. What's funny, too, though, is like we've had so many people come through recently on the debt free stage that said that they talked about you on their first date. <laughs> yeah, that has come up. <laughs> I don't know that that's your recommendation. No, though. it's not. I can't I can't really say Ramsey is romance. I'm just it just doesn't scream romance. So. <laughs> um, maybe for grown ups. I don't know. But uh, oh, my gosh, I don't. um so I, I'm trying to think how, how I would coach like one of my kids or something. Because what you're looking for when you're dating is, um, I mean, you're either just out there goofing off or you're actually looking for someone to marry, right? And yeah. so um, if you have financial things or anything in your life, values-wise, you should have a lot of things that are deal breakers. Uh, maybe it's not romantic, maybe it's efficiency, but I'd want to get to the deal breakers fairly 
quick just to not waste time. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm making this up on the spot. I don't, what do you think, Christina? So when my husband and I were dating, we went to this church service together at one point where the pastor gave us a challenge. And he said, if you're single or if you're dating right now, if you start dating someone, I want you to go home tonight and sit down with that person and lay everything on the table, like lay out all your drama, lay out any type of baggage you have, anything hidden, your financial stuff. This was like three weeks into dating for us because they were like, if, like you said, if that's something you can't handle, it's like, you know, the baggage early on, like, you know, early on, whether or not that person has a history, whether they have like things that are deal breakers for you. So we literally went home that night. We went over, actually, I think we did a, a like a coffee house or something. And we sat down and we said, we said, okay, here's the stuff. Here's my stuff. Here's my junk. Can you handle it? And obviously near nearly 15 years later, here we are. We're still good. But yeah. I think that's an important practice to kind of go, you know, I don't want to find out a year into dating when I'm already in love that they have something that I can't tolerate. Okay. I'm, here's an interesting idea. I'm just, I'm making this up on the spot. I do this a <laughs> lot on this show. Y'all don't know that, but um, well, okay. The four things we do know data, the four things that if you're in agreement on these four things, you have a very high likelihood of your marriage not only lasting but prospering money religion kids whether to have them and how to treat them and dealing with the um in-laws the extended family because in every family there's crazy and if you think there's not it's you so um that you know that that you need to know how to deal with crazy because crazy's out there somewhere, and um, so we're gonna. If you can deal with the four things: extended family, kids, religion, and money. If you're in agreement on those, you will prosper. So I would want to, at some point, discuss all of those things early, sooner rather than later. But first date might be weird, <laughs> you know. But. Um, I mean, like, you know, he, he's going to pay for your dinner with a credit card and you go into freak out mode or something. I, <laughs> it's <you know>. over. <laughs> it's over. You're an idiot. What are you crazy? Yeah, that's it. It's over. We're done. <laughs> Wait a minute. We didn't even start. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. What What are you thinking, Alexandra? Um, I mean, I, I know that a first date, of course, I'm not going to be like, well, how much debt are you in? But I'm always just like, okay, well, as a second and third, like you said, with time, I'm like, well, I don't want to waste each other's time. Like, I want us to be on the same page with like financial goals, like what we want in the future and things like that. So um, I'm thinking like um, what Christina said with, um, you know, like a week, two weeks, you know, putting it all on the table, like, hey, it seems like we really like each other. Like, let's really like what yeah. what are the what deal breakers have? i mean yeah, you know exactly. I, what are my non-negotiables okay and i'd want to know those um you know like if you never want to have kids and this person wants to have 17 kids that's probably a deal breaker <laughs> you know mm -hmm. for most people right um and if, you know if you uh you know, absolutely cannot stand the idea of being in debt. And they think that, um, you should go borrow $10 million and buy investment real estate off of TikTok suggestions. Um, then, you know, you probably don't have a fit. Right. And so if you're on extremes, in other words, that's going to wake you up. Um, you know, uh, your spiritual walk would be a big one. That'd be a big one, um, as a deal breaker, because that's going to inform almost every other area of your life. And, and so, um, you know, if they're go if they are of a different religion or no religion, they're atheist or whatever, that's going to inform that belief system. And it is a belief system either way uh, is going to inform parenting. It's going to inform communication. It's going to inform everything, how you treat each other, the whole bit. And so, yeah, that's very interesting. But yeah, I, I it does feel like that, um, uh, uh, you're not just date is you're not recre if you're not doing recreational dating okay if you're dating for the purpose of uh what you would have called in the 1950s courting right or something like that for the purpose of looking for a mate to marry then you're you're going to get there sooner than later on all the non-negotiables and money would just be one of them well and i think it's better to get there sooner rather than later of course not awkwardly on the first date yeah. but sooner rather than later so you're not wasting time because it's like if you get to 
eight months and it's a non-negotiable. That sucks. The 17 kids, you don't realize that till you're dating. Some of these people are putting like FPU graduate on their dating website. The thing, like, you know, or like I do the Ramsey stuff or something like that. And and so it's like, oh, I can't stand those people. They're all a cult. And so I'm not going out with that person. Right. That makes sense. I mean, that's at least it's a filter. Yeah, I was going to say it filters it. You know, know, early. So, um, I mean, we we get negative press sometimes. And so but we kind of like it because it's a filter Mm -hmm. because at least people know who we are. And you go, I don't like that. Okay, then you wouldn't want to be over here. You know, it's kind of a deal breaker. The same kind of a date, you know, different different things. So, um, yeah, that's that's very interesting, though. Maybe maybe we should have a Ramsey we, dating service. We someday. have <laughs> have have had lots of people request a Ramsey dating service. So many so that we actually considered it and said no. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, it comes up all the time. That's just weird, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it does come up. It comes up a lot. So uh, there we go. And um, oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah. It's interesting. I feel like it is kind of nice to have those filters because it is such a different world of dating. Even 15 years for me and my husband and you and Sharon, it's like with oh, yeah. the Internet and so many filters and being able to choose things. It's like being able to just like have that information up front would be nice for it to be like, hey, I'm debt free, or hey, you know, I see this. What like? Yeah, I not mean, that I, debt I, is a filter. I've got like, four hundred thousand just... dollars in student loan debt. It's kind of like saying, I've got two children. You would want to know that. You would want to know. Yeah, fairly quickly. You know, yeah. and and then you get to decide if you want to go forward with two children or four hundred thousand. Either one. Yeah, I mean that's part of the process. Well, that puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Good job, Christina. Austin, Ben, James, Zach, and Andrew in the booth. The booth dudes, they make it happen. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Have you been inspired to make a change with your money? Want to know where to start? Take our three-minute money quiz to get a plan you can follow. Go to RamseySolutions.com and search for Get Started to get a plan for your money.